Almost there. Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome to our live stream. We're gonna have fun tonight. I'm excited to be here tonight talking about attorneys. Yeah, y'all know I like to talk about attorneys. So I got an attorney, well, actually, he's an investigator from the Bar Association from California that sent me a letter and to let me know that he's going to be investigating me for the unauthorized pack of law without license. Yeah. Y'all ain't nervous for me, are you? <laughs> so we're going to talk about that tonight. We're going to go with my research on the unauthorized practice of the law without a license. And then you guys are going to get a chance to decide yourself if y'all need to be, if y'all need to worry about me. So let's just get started. So today we're going to talk about unauthorized practice of law without a license, and I'm going to show you why it's a lie. No state can license the practice of law. And I'm going to show you the Supreme Court uh, case law. And I use that all the time when these people get up in my face. So this is not the first time. I think to date I've had uh, eight different states, well, eight different investigators from eight different states uh, contact me. And with this one will be nine and I'm still here. So that's all I can say about that. But this person called, uh, sent me a, uh, sent me an email and I invited them to call in on the radio show next Wednesday at one o'clock or this Wednesday, this coming Wednesday at, at one o'clock central time um, to call in to the radio show. And I'll be glad to discuss the issue with him on the air. And I sent him his email response, I don't know, two days ago or something. I haven't heard back from him since. But I'm leaving his information uh, in the comment section down below. So you guys can contact him. He told me to contact him if I had any questions. So I'm sure that meant you guys too. If anybody wants to call and find out if he's going to call in, I, I left his number and the call in number to the radio show that's going to take place on uh, Hamilton Radio at hamiltonradio.net um, on uh, Wednesday at one o'clock central time. And the call in phone number is 609 585 0400. And when you call in, you'll probably get Gene. He's the, he's the owner of the station and also my producer. And just let him know who you are and why you're calling in. And if there's somebody that wants that, that's uh, grumpy about what I'm doing, I hope they call in. And I hope this dude calls in too. I don't know if he will because I sent him a pretty stern email just to let him know that I'm not part of, of, of his bar association and he has no jurisdiction over me. And it's totally ridiculous that he would even, and I'll send you a letter, I'll show you the letter that he sent me uh, later on in the presentation. Um, he has no, no business even getting up in my face, okay, uh, from the state level. Of course, like I said, they haven't done their homework. So they just assume because my ad may show in California that that's where I am. So I think he's figuring it, he's probably figuring it out now. And if he goes and listen to any of my videos, he'll see that what I'm saying is true and he don't have a leg stand on, but I welcome him to come and get in my face if he wants to. I've been preparing for this for a while. So today we're going to talk about that. You're going to talk about, uh, we're going to learn how to challenge the officers of the court when they dismiss your lawsuit illegally. And um, you'll have a better understanding of, our, of the legal filing requirements. Um, 
And we're going to talk about the difference between the following requirements, the statute that shows the following requirements and the local rules. We'll talk a little bit about, uh, about that. You will also understand the local rules is, uh, is how they screw you over and throw you under the bus, in my opinion. In my opinion, the local rules are for attorneys and their, their, their goal is to speed things up to the court. So anytime your case is getting sped up to the courts, you get host. So you don't wanna go that route. So you will also learn what to do uh, when you're faced with uh, complying with those local rules, because there's always a couple of, there's always options unless you limit yourself in the corner with, with all their rules. So yeah, there, there you go. How, you see what I did with that? You'll also learn how to hound yourself when the clerk refuses to file your documents. And we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later on. Um, I had a guy who went uh, to federal court to file his documents and they were giving him a hard time. Apparently he filed all of them at the same time, which if you're going to do that, you want to hand them one document at a time so they don't see the, the, the sanction motion or the uh, TRO, you know, for $5.5 million. They, they have a little bit of a problem with the sanction motion, the clerk does, because the clerk's job is to protect her buddy attorneys. So they'll try to get out of filing that. So anyway, he filed all of, he, he handed her all of his stuff at the same time. And they went and looked at it, then they called the supervisor over and they looked at it, then they came back and started giving him a hard time and telling him that, you know, he was gonna be able to, to file his stuff and um, all these excuses. And, uh, and this guy was pretty smart. He told them, you guys have my stuff already and you're on camera right there, uh, accepting my stuff. You can do whatever you want with it. And he turned around and walked off. They were pissed that he told me they took his stuff and threw it in a trash can. And this black man, so you know, they were trying to educate him, see if they could call in all the, call in the, the, the troops to come get him under control. He just left. Went out and sat in his car. He told me he was sitting out in his car for a few minutes smoking a cigarette because he was still kind of mad. And uh, well, actually, before he got to his car, he walked around to see if he can find the prosecutor's office so he could report them. <laughs> and I told him that's not the way it works. But anyway, while he was sitting in his car, they uh, he got a phone call. And it was from the clerk's office. And the clerk um, apologized to him and told him that they had just talked to a pro se attorney and the pro se attorney uh, told them that they had to file his stuff. And of course I'm thinking pro se attorney, what the hell are you kidding me? That's the best they can come up with. Yeah. So that goes to show attorneys are lazy. They're lazy. And just like in this case, they haven't taken the time to figure out where I'm at. They just, they just assume, and that's what they do all the time because in the end, they're going to get you to take the deal. Well, that's, that's their program. So, hey, those of you who don't know me, I'm Coach Neighbors, and I am the uh, owner of Advocates for Justice Paralegal Service. We are different, and we prove it. So I'm a foreclosure defense coach <clears throat> that helps folks uh, who are ready to stand up and fight to stay in their house, in their houses. And I've been through what you're facing. And I know what it feels like when you can't protect your family. <clears throat> and I decided that I was that it was never going to happen to my family again. So I started learning the loopholes and the procedures and their stuff. And that's what I'm going to teach you guys how to use. And that's why they're mad. The people in California, they're a little bit grumpy about my eliminate property tax lawsuit package. And he actually, he, they mentioned that in the letter. I'll show it to you later. So the bar members laughed at me when I was in court and it made me angry. Well, it pissed me off. But when I was writing this up, it kept wanting to change it to angry for some reason. It, it didn't like the word pissed off. So I learned the loopholes in their processes and procedures in court. And I will, I will show you I will teach you how to use those loopholes against them in your $5.5 million lawsuit that you'll be filing in federal court to address the fraud at signing. Now, remember, and people have the hardest time with this, 
I don't need to hear all of the things that happened to you going back to 2009 or all the, the when the servicers, okay? Because that's not what we do. If you get in my program, we're not going into court arguing what they said you did or didn't do, okay? Because anytime you go into foreclosure court arguing the banking system, you, you should just go home and pack your stuff, okay? I'm serious because they're not going to, they don't care. You're going to have to have a non-conventional approach and you're going to need to be challenged in the jurisdiction. And when you learn about the jurisdiction and you learn all of the loopholes and stuff that's in their program, you don't understand why we're doing it this way. And one of the things I'll tell people too is you don't have to wait until they're done stealing your property. Yep, you don't have to wait till they're done stealing your property to sue them. Well. Let's change that. You don't have to wait until they're done trying to steal your property to sue them. Just think how you'll feel when you force the attorneys to answer to your lawsuit for wrongful foreclosure slash breach of contract in federal court. Now, I got a question for you guys. I might have a couple of questions before, before this is over with. But this first question I'm going to ask you guys and I want you to leave your comments. Let me see here. I need to open up the, the chat window so I can see who's here. So I want you guys to leave your comments to my questions uh, in the chat window. And so even if you come in late after we start, if you see the question, just go ahead and answer it. Hang on one second here. Okay. So the question is, the question is, do you know who calls the shots in court? The judge or the attorney? Now take a second to ponder that. Okay, time's up. Please type in your answer if there's anyone there. I think I only have one participant right now. So if your answer, those of you who answer the judge, you just got hosed and you need to go home and pack your stuff, okay? The attorney is the one running the show in court. Well, before court. By the time you show up, the attorney and the judge uh, already have conspired about how, uh, about your fate and, and how your fate's gonna end. Okay, they already got that all figured out before they before they before they have the hearing. The problem in the problem is the court is holding your pleadings to the standard of a licensed attorney and dismissing your lawsuit when the Supreme Court has ruled that no state can license the practice of law. The court is conspiring with attorneys to monopolize the legal industry and by spreading fear and with their lies that they have a license and that is illegal for other, for other folks to help people with legal issues. This video will show you the truth about the unauthorized practice of law without a license and the strategy you need to protect your lawsuit and yourself if, if you're in court. Now, the problem is the court's holding you, you holding your pleadings to a higher standard than a licensed attorney because attorneys don't have a license. Keep, keeping it simple. I see people running around, beating their head against the wall, trying to match the case law and calling me complaining about the case law is from another state and all of this stuff. I just, and, and, and I have a hard time with it because people are jumping through all of these hoops trying to make their pleadings um, be to the 
to a level of a licensed attorney when attorneys don't have a license and attorneys aren't following any of those rules. They're making you follow them in court, throwing your stuff out, sending you back, telling you you got to do all this stuff, trying to steal your hope. But the attorney ain't doing none of that. So let's just go ahead and move on to the entourage practice of law without a license. But before we get to all that, I want to tell you guys, please subscribe to my channel down below or above or, or wherever, wherever that thing is. Um, so, so you can get free foreclosure defense advice. I know the, the, the investigator had, okay, we're going to call it free foreclosure defense legal advice. He had a problem because I used the word legal in something. Yeah, right. So I'm giving away free foreclosure defense legal advice. I'm also giving away guys advice. And don't forget to ring the bell so that you'll be notified when class starts. Because if you're late, you're going to have to run. The unauthorized practice of law without a license is nonsense. And it's for attorneys. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled no state can license the practice of a law. And I'm going to show you some other stuff. Let me open up my share window here. Okay. So the share window is open up. Now, when I'm researching for stuff, a lot of times I'll have different files and when I run across something cool, I'll save it in that file. And then like down the road, when I need something cool to stick up in an attorney's face, yeah, you, you, you get the idea how that works. So what I'm gonna show you here is all of the stuff that I've saved over the years to stick in their face when they wanna get in my face about the unauthorized pack law without a license. Apparently I'm a little passionate about that. So you can see right here, the non-threat path of law without license, the Supreme Court has ruled on the Swear versus Board of Examiners that no state can license, no state can, or, or any state larger case or lower case can license the practice of law. And um, you can read the rest of these. Uh, certificate is not a license to practice law as uh, occupation nor do business as a law firm. The state bar card is not a license, it's a union dues card. Oh, they hate it when you tell them that. And we can, I've done my homework on this. State Bar Association is unconstitutional monopoly. Yep. violates criminal enterprise, Article 2, Section 1, separation of power clause in the Constitution. There's no power of authority to join legislation. Yep, see this, this, mm -hmm. I don't understand how they think they can, I think they're so used to intimidating people, they think everybody just gonna get scared and go sit down, I guess, I don't know. Now, what I'll do is I'll copy and paste this in the comment section. Um, when the video is complete and in the live stream as well. So you guys can have all these, they're pretty long. I mean, I've saved these for, for a few years. And I use them. I use them, well, I use them nine times. This is gonna be the 10th time, but I'm getting tired of using them. So I think this time I'm gonna step up a little bit and create a little bit of problem for these people that wants to get in my face because I'm helping people learn how to save money and, and fight themselves. You know, and you know what's sad about this whole thing is they don't want me or anybody else helping people, but they ain't trying to help nobody anyway. They know anybody got 10 grand to pay some attorney to help you do anything, not, not save your house. Who's got 10 grand to put it for foreclosure? I don't think so. So they ain't trying to help anybody anyway. So if they don't want to help the people I'm helping. Why is it they don't want me helping them? Oh, that's because the attorney is the one who signed to do the foreclosure illegally against your property in the first place. And no attorney is going to go up against their buddy when they're all 
making bank from doing the illegal crap they're doing. And then there's some other case law here that, that I use uh, occasionally. And you can see here, it says, you know, pro se litigants pleadings are not to be held to the same standard as, as, as standards of perfection as a, as a, uh, a lawyer. Standard of perfection. I have a little problem with that. I almost laugh when I said that when it's connected to attorney because attorneys are lazy and their standard of perfection is pretty freaking low. The only thing that they use is each other to give each other passes or their membership in the club to get the judge to help them. You know, their whole program is set up, is structured for arguing. And once the arguing's done, then it just gets to help them. I mean, it's pretty simple for me, to me. So if I'm gonna go into court, I'm gonna go into court with stuff they don't wanna argue about. That's how I, that's how I roll. They ain't gonna wanna argue about this stuff because they know if they throw me under the bus that I'm gonna appeal it and, is, and sue them and it's gonna be case law for other people with their name connected to it. And now, they won't be able to get their, I don't know, their free houses or their free cars or the campaign contributions or or their donation to their offshore account, retirement account, wh whatever it is they get, because they're getting something. I ain't quite figured out exactly what it is, but they're getting something for throwing people under the bus and helping uh, these people steal homes from everybody. So you can see this is three pages of and these case laws are priceless for people who are who are um, are working pro se to defend their property. And these case laws are not laws you're going to be able to find like real quick like that. Because like I said, these these things I found way back 10, 15 pages back and you know, on the internet, back where the stuff gets real. And these are other notes. These are notes on RICO. Um, so that's it, five pages. So I did a Google search of the unauthorized practice of law without a license. And I'm gonna pull that out so you guys can see what that looks like too. And this is it. So, you know, you can see right here, it says, you know, so I'm saying you may not practice law in California unless you're an active member of the California bar. The rules set forth uh, in the business and professional code 6125. Oh, wait, uh, code. Hmm. So we talked about that in one of a couple of the other videos. Okay, they're saying that statutes are laws, codes are laws, ordinance are laws, lies are laws. Okay, I went a little too far on the last one, but you see, you see what I'm saying? Okay, none of those have the three elements necessary to be considered a valid law. Codes and statutes don't have the elements. Well, I'm going to make it easy for you. Those elements are, in order for something to be a valid law, it must have an enacting clause, it must have a title, and it must have a body. And if those items are missing, if those elements are missing, it is an invalid law. And an invalid law cannot be used to provide proper jurisdiction to the court to take action and or steal somebody's house or give their house away to someone. So basically, in a nutshell, the foreclosure statute is in, is in violation of the Constitution. Think about it. If that statute does not contain the three elements necessary to be a valid law, it's in violation of the Constitution. I'm just throwing it out there because that's how I roll. I throw it out there, and if you can take that information and make it work for you and protect your property, then there you go. If you need help, I have the online course that I just launched a couple of weeks ago. I think we have four uh, students enrolled in it now. Um, and that online course is half price for $1,200.
And it includes every lawsuit package that I have in my inventory that you would need to go after uh, to go after the judge for trying to throw you out of court because that's where you, I'm just gonna throw it on the table. That's where you're gonna end up at. It is not gonna be about who you did what with in 2009 or the service or none of that. It's gonna be about you stepping up to block them from throwing you out of court because they ain't gonna, they ain't gonna be able to win, not in my stuff, no. And if you have seen my stuff, you'll know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so this <clears throat> code is like right above an ordinance. You know, you got ordinance, codes, and statutes. They still haven't got up to the law part because none of those contain the elements necessary to be considered a valid law. This is one thing that I would move to dismiss your case with by itself. And it's free information that I'm providing along with the other free information that I provide on my YouTube channel. Those videos on my YouTube channel are, uh, the information in those videos have been compiled from members of my private Facebook page, their real-time feedback on how these attorneys are trying to skate the issues in our lawsuit packages. And our online, cor our online course, we're gonna have a, a, a Facebook group for the online course as well that just deals with the online course. And that way it's gonna be, be a lot simpler. So when you go to my YouTube channel, okay, the first half of the title is what I need to have uh, in there for my video to rank in the top 10. And the second part of the title is more about what the video is actually about. Now, the first part of the title is still related or that would be a problem, but still that's a good way to understand how to get around on, on, on also my videos are, are grouped into playlists. So I have a playlist for instructional videos, uh, which show you the instructions for the lawsuit packages. And I have playlists for tips and strategies. Um, I have a playlist for uh, tips for going into court and I have a playlist for the eliminating property tax lawsuit package. So that would be a good way to try to get around in, uh, in my YouTube videos as well, looking at the playlist. So then you can pick out the playlist of, if, for the information that you're interested in and then start watching the videos in that playlist or, or whatever as, as, as an idea. So all of the videos that are in my YouTube channel came from issues or experiences that people uh, dealt with uh, filing their lawsuit or keeping it filed or, or whatever. And the idea was to put together a program and uh, be able to communicate with people real time and add documents to screw the door shut for the, uh, for, um, for the excuses that they were trying to use to get out of being held liable for the illegal crap that they're doing. And, you know, when you have a program like that, pretty soon you start getting the door nailed shut pretty good. And that's where we're at right now. Everybody in the group that have used the lawsuit package, um, everything is just kind of, they're kind of stalling. Um, I have six or seven people use the, uh, the jurisdictional challenge with an affidavit, which is the main new document that the online uh, the students in the online course will be using. And six out of seven of those people got their, their foreclosures either, like one person uh, got the default judgment uh, overturned and blocked the sale of her dad's house. That Her name is Shamel Maxwell. She's in the group too. And she told me last week, and I posted this in the group, that the buyer contacted her dad and let her dad know that he's trying to get his money back because there were several discrepancies, uh, a lot of discrepancies in in the mortgage uh, after they read his his complaint. And so I told Shamel that I probably wouldn't spend any time talking to that dude because in your lawsuit, you have it over there right on the above the case number somewhere over there says you reserve the right to amend. And you may be adding him to your lawsuit because at the end of the day, you're gonna want the you're gonna want the jury to figure out 
who has liability for what? Because the property did not sell. There's no record of the sale. They're saying it didn't sell. The sell place says they didn't sell it. But this dude's saying he's trying to get his money back. So why would he need to get his money back if the property didn't sell? And how could he pay for the property before the property sold? You see? This some crap right there, the freaking ain't adding up. So she said they couldn't wait to throw that in, in, in the dude's face and see what he got to say. So he's over here poking around, know what his goal is. But I told her she's way past that. She got her $5.5 million on the table. She crushed their stinking default judgment. She got her case filed in federal court for $5.5 million. And now she will be able to take all of this that she just got accomplished and attach it to her federal lawsuit as evidence to show that they're over here in state court being dirty. So yeah, and she's pretty happy. So I'm gonna show you guys the complaint letter that the dude sent me. And, you know, I, I don't know. I guess I get a little more pissed off every time I read the letter because it's so stupid. Okay, so he, he, he must think I'm totally stupid. I don't know. But I still will be glad to talk with him on my show on Wednesday at one o'clock central time on Hamilton Radio. That's hamiltonradio.net. And here is his uh, complaint letter that he sent to me. From California, among other things, uh, property tax and to obtain your property deed from the county recorder's office. They don't like that. Then he says, my website entitled foreclosure defense lawsuit center where I provide legal advice concerning property taxes, foreclosures via YouTube videos and offer a lawsuit package for $500, which includes eliminate property taxes. You keep bringing that up. That's like plucked a nerve. Foreclosure defense lawsuits, legal malpractice, and medical conditions and, and notice of claim. Now, here's the interesting part. As you see here in the blue, they checked their register. They, they checked their registered attorney system, which reveals that I'm not a license to practice. I'm not licensed to practice in the state of California. So, if I'm not licensed to practice in the state of California, why the hell y'all mess with me? And then they write, if I am a licensed attorney but not in the state of California, I guess, then I'm supposed to uh, provide them which state that I'm licensed in at my bar number. And if, if I'm not, please describe my business. My business is teaching people how to kick attorneys at butts, excuse me. Do I provide legal advice to individuals? No, I provide guys advice, coach neighbors advice. But you know what? At the end of the day, it ain't about anything that's legal. This whole foreclosure stuff, all the stuff they're doing, it ain't about legal. We already talked about that. The statutes do not contain the three elements to make it a valid law. So we're not talking about anything that's legal. All that crap changed back in, I don't know, 1933 when they done away with, with, with the statutes at large and started going with their fake revised codes and statutes. And if you, if you do your research and look up what a statute is, you'll find it's, it's a rule from the corporation. That's pretty much it. It's not a law from Congress, the legislature, or the Constitution. I should have started with the Constitution first. 
And then it goes on down here to talk about the business professional code section 6125 provides no person shall practice law unless that person is an active member of the state bar. Yeah. So they also left me a little thing down here. So if I want to go look at their codes, I can go down here and, and review the codes. Mm, no, I don't have to review the codes. So, So are you guys worried about me now? <laughs> Let me go ahead and turn off the screen share so that I can see how many people are here. Is anyone here? Okay, there's the screen that sees everybody. I see a few people here. Hey, Crystal. Okay, so Crystal's thanking me for helping people. She says, who can you trust? So Crystal, I got my uh, online course up and running. If that, that might be something that you're, you know, you'd be interested in. Um, I'll leave a link to it. Maybe I'll just pull it up and show you guys, show you what it looks like. I got it open right here, I think. Oops, that one's still under completion. That This one is the non-judicial course and I hope to have it done by the end of this week. I've got most of it done, but I'm not done with it yet. So we gotta go to the other course. Okay, we're gonna open up the sales page here. This is the sales page. And if you click the enroll button, it should take you to the checkout page. Yep, take you to the checkout page. But let's go back to the sales page. And then when I scroll down here, you can see the, you know, the, the curriculum, you know, how to use the course, the course outline. Um, I have a welcome video here, the resources, the banker's ultimate fear. This came from the PDF that's included as one of the resources. It's called the, the Banker's Secret Manual. And that PDF has some great strategies in it. We use some of those strategies out of that PDF to beef up the, the lawsuit uh, documents that we're using in the online course. So they're not the same documents that's, that we're using in, in, the, uh, in the lawsuit packages. We beef these up. And the main document package that you're going to be using in the online course is the jurisdictional challenge with an affidavit. And that document um, I had on sale to people in the Facebook page and a private Facebook page for like 200 bucks because I wanted to see how they responded if they could. And so far, you know, it stopped everything except one case. And that one case, um, the person didn't follow through with the steps like, like they were supposed to. So, and we're, we're working right now to get that situation under control. Um, but basically what you're gonna be doing is following that jurisdictional challenge with an affidavit. If you enroll in the online course, you will be filing, now this is for the judicial foreclosure. You will be filing the uh, jurisdictional affidavit, jurisdictional challenge with an affidavit uh, in 
the state case against your property to blow that case up before you file your lawsuit in federal court. And then you'll be able to use all of that that you filed uh, as evidence in federal court to show that the court didn't have jurisdiction in the first place in state on the state court level. So that's the way that's going to set up. And that'll give you a little time to get your stuff done and get your lawsuit filed. You won't be backed up against the wall once you blow their case up with your jurisdictional challenge. And just think about it. They're not going to be able to respond to the jurisdictional challenge by affidavit. So if they can't spawn with counter affidavit, they're toast. Mm -hmm. This is one of the little ways we use their stuff against them. Because that's what we do here. The banker's ultimate fear, the tips and strategies. Um, I use uh, new videos in here. Some of the videos um, are from my, my YouTube channel that like the tips and strategies. Um, that's in uh, convention versus non-conventional. That's a new video that I put together, or that's a lecture that I put together, and then setting yourself up for the appeal in the beginning of your lawsuit. So, and uh, the manager judge does not have jurisdiction without consent from all parties. And a lot of times that's the first, that's their first line of defense using the manager's judge to throw your stuff out. And usually what the manager judge does, well, the, either the district judge or the clerk of hand the stuff down to the manager judge, the hot potato stuff. And the manager judge will look at it and write a report to dismiss it. And then the manager judge will send his or her report to the district judge to dismiss your stuff based off the report. And so the district judge dismisses your stuff based off of the report and not based off of uh, any facts of finding or conclusions of law. People need to understand, okay, you're in a, an administrative court. And the only way to, and this is my opinion, based off of helping people for a period of time, the best thing that you can do is force the court to be a judicial court and jam them up when they're not a judicial court. And what that means is, as soon as they throw you under the bus, you need to handle it. You need to address it. I don't care if it's the judge or the clerk or the, the person cleaning the floor, if they violate you, you need to address it. If you don't, then what they're going to do is just going to keep violating you because they know you're not going to do nothing. They already know 80% of Americans can't afford an attorney and they know no attorney is going to help you kick their butt anyway, even if you could afford it. They know the odds are in their favor. And that's how they roll. So here you can see the documents are set up. Now I have the documents numbered, but please don't get caught up in those numbers because those documents will be, you'll be filing them in different, in different order, depending on how they respond or what your situation is. Now the first two documents, probably the 5.5 uh, million dollar lawsuit and the uh, restraining order, or probably be the first one, but you can't file a restraining order unless you can prove that you're that you're actually being harmed. So like if you're about to get kicked out of your house or if they're about to sell your house, then I would use the restraining order. If you're not you know, on the edge of the cliff, then you wanna save that one for later uh, after you get control of things. But I, I numbered these so that they have some order to them, but really you're not gonna be filing them in all in the same order that they have in. And they have, I have videos in here that talk about the documents too. And we talk about the different things that you need to be aware of. And at some point when I get a full, uh, when my class is full, we'll have Zoom meetings and then people can talk about uh, the issues that they're having or whatever. We could even have Zoom meetings and then have different groups go off into breakout rooms um, and talk about things that are pertaining to your state or whatever. I mean. The, the opportunities are endless here, only limited by, by our will to do the work and to learn how to operate the system. That's kind of been a problem, so. Now, in the end of this, I came back and I added a, another section. And the, uh, the new section is time to sue your ex-attorney section. The legal malpractice breach of contract lawsuit. I put this together so people who were ripped off by their attorneys can use it to get their money back. Now, 
you have to keep in mind that the attorney structured the current legal system. And as you already know, it's not structured to help us. So in legal malpractice, they made it almost impossible to prove damages. I mean, unless like a lot of people die, it's hard to prove damages. So what I've done is we kind of twisted that up a little bit. We're going to have to have a breach of contract for legal malpractice, breach of contract lawsuit. And you're requesting your attorney fees back, not damages. So, you know, just like they try to trip, trip us up on these words. That's what we're doing here. You're going after your attorney fees back because the attorney breached the contract. And I think in most cases, it's not very complicated to prove that the attorney breached your contract and threw you under the bus. Now, I'm going to add one more section to this also. And the new section that I'm going to add is a section that's going to go over how to structure the lawsuit documents. So and when you sign up to take this course, I want to make sure that you that you're able to learn everything you need to do what I'm doing, helping people. Or if you have real properties, uh, your property, if you're a investor, you can use these uh, this course to help put yourself in a position to protect your properties. If you know, because with this COVID-19, we already know what they're doing, and they're trying to run us all out the door so they can get our stuff. So if you're a property investor or if you're just a person who want to help other people. And this is, you know, this course will help you do that. And the documents that I put together, if I have to put any documents together to block them from harassing me for helping people. Well, actually, I already have some documents put together, uh, which I used in the state of Kansas to get them out of my face. So, but, you know, I've been learning as we go. So the newer documents now are carry a lot more weight so i don't have to worry about uh the court thing but when i first started doing this i wanted to uh to make sure that i could control the court thing when they try to stop me with this unauthorized practice law without license so that i can move forward without worrying about it and as you can see i'm still here so we're doing something right Now it's time to put a stop to the fraud on the court. These attorneys are uh, are filing the wrong with foreclosure lawsuits and going after people's properties and stuff. It's time to file your own lawsuit for wrong with foreclosure and breach of contract against the attorney who signed the documents to start the foreclosure against your property. People, people, I talked to a guy today. People are so wrapped up into thinking that. The lender is the one coming after them, and it's not the lender. It's the attorneys acting as third-party debt collectors. And even though people are told the lender tells people, uh, we don't have nothing to do with the foreclosure, people think, oh, no, they're lying. Well, no, they're not lying. They don't have nothing to do with the foreclosure. They already got their money from the situation, and they're trying to hide in the corner over here while after they are illegally sold it as, as a debt after they dumped charge off which is illegal. I don't care what you read on the internet. It's illegal. And it's illegal for a corporation to do a charge off and then sell the alleged debt to a third party debt collector. And I will tell you why it's illegal. It's illegal because after they do the charge off and claim it on their insurance and claim it on their taxes, there's no place left on their corporate books to put any additional income. So where's that money go that they get for selling these alleged debts to, uh, for unlawfully selling these alleged debts to attorneys. Where's that money go? Mm -hmm. So now you're looking at income tax fraud. Um, you're looking at insurance fraud. You're, you're, you know, you're looking at RICO, wire fraud, money laundering, all of those things apply but they only apply if people have the courage to stick them up in their face. So the local rules, the local rules are for attorneys, um, to, in my opinion, they're for attorneys to follow. And attorneys will use those local ru rules to, to move your case faster through the court. And anytime your case is being moved faster through the court, 
you're getting hosed. Let me see here. I need to. Okay, Harry Nicholson. Hey, Calvin J. Lindley. What's up, Calvin? Hey, the rest of you guys watching, let me know who's here. I need to take roll call. I can see if anybody's skipping class. Anybody skipping class is going to have to run and practice. So one of the other things we're going to talk about too, the local rules are in contrast to the constitution. So that's what I would say to that. And when you're faced with following requirement issues, um, you must Google, uh, you must Google research the following requirement statute for your state and review it. As a matter of fact, it'd be good to have that in, in your document so that when they start telling you all this crap, you can tell them, hey, my legal team um, used my legal team structured this document in accordance with the following requirements for the state or whatever your state is. See right here, and then show the address for the following requirement state for the following requirements for your state, and that'll pretty much uh, that'll pretty much shut them up. Now, if they continue giving you a hard time, you want to ask them to clarify. Uh, what the problem is, so you can explain it to your legal team. Everything has to do about your legal team. You want to talk about your legal team all the time. Now, if they're just not going to let you file your stuff, then you should call the clerk supervisor. And you want to ask the supervisor if he or she has the authority to make a legal determination on your pleading. And don't say another word after that. Make them say the next word. And if you do that, they will file your stuff because they can't say yes. And that's what they're trying to do. So the benefits you guys are gonna get from today's uh, stream is you We'll learn how to put yourself in position to address the attorney's misconduct in federal court, where you will be able to take control of the state court for a closure case and make the attorney answer to your lawsuit. Remember, I told you at the beginning, advocates for justice, foreclosure, defense, parallel service, we're different, and we prove it. Now, my tip of the day is. I like to teach people how to force the court to be a judicial court. And you do this by attacking the corporate court when they violate your rights and they force you to proceed in their administrative court where you have no rights under the constitution. Now I know this sounds kind of crazy, but you know, I was thinking about this today. This is pretty much what I do because you're in an administrative court. And if you allow them to dismiss your stuff without them following the laws, then they're administratively throwing you under the bus. And you can block that by challenging them. If the judge illegally dismiss your stuff, challenge the judge. I have, a, I have a reconsideration package that has a motion in it for reconsideration. It has a motion in it for, for a recusal to recuse the judge for allowing them uh, the attorneys uh, uh, unfair advantage. And it has a notice of claim in there also to file against the judge. And it has a notice of appeal uh, template. And basically what I do is I like to file all the dirt and then do the notice of appeal the next day or two days later, okay? Before they have a chance to respond to the dirt. 
And once you file a notice of appeal, <clears throat> the jurisdiction is taken from the local court unless the local court can remove the obstacle. Uh-huh. You see how that works. So if you guys are tired of, of uh, the attorneys laughing at you in court, you got two options. You can enroll in my new online course, wrongful foreclosure lawsuit, DIY, and get what you need to file, to, to get everything you need to uh, file your lawsuit. Lectures, videos, all half price, $1,200. Or if you're, if your uh, budget is pointing you toward the lawsuit packages that are uh, that are only at five hundred dollars, you can take control with that option. So click on the link be uh, below to get to one of those options, and let's get rolling. And I also have my email address here and and, and my phone number. If you're going to call me, I would you know if you have a specific question. If you're going to call me, it works out better if you decide if you want to take, you know, get the package or not, and then get the package and call me and we'll, we'll, we'll get our uh, strategy session. If you have questions about the package, sure, you're welcome to call me, um, but just make sure that we're talking about the package and doing the non-conventional program. I don't really like to get on the phone and spend 20 minutes talking about what happened in 2009 when we're not going to be using any of that stuff. You know, I have the hardest time convincing people in my program, we're not going to talk about what happened in 2009 and all that stuff and what you did or didn't do, what they said you did. We're not talking about all that. You're going to be suing them for the crap that they did at signing to throw you under the bus. And the only thing that we use in a judicial foreclosure, we use a petition to show that the attorney, we use a petition as an exhibit to show that the attorney is actually the person who signed it and there's no witness. And if there's no witness, the court does not have jurisdiction. In a non-judicial foreclosure, we use the notice of default letter and a copy of the deed of trust. And the reason we do that is because the notice of default letter is the letter that is used to initiate the foreclosure proceedings against your property. And we wanna show who signed it. The, the, uh, the, trust, the trustee document shows who, act, who the trustee actually is. The deed of trust shows who the trustee actually is. And if the two don't match, it's a problem. It's a fatal flaw to the action. So that's how we roll on that. So let me get back over to the other window and see if anybody has any questions. What can you do if the rescission is on hold pending? Crystal, I don't, I don't do anything with what's already going on. Okay, what's pending on hold? I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about if, if it was me. I would be filing my lawsuit against them and getting it on the court record because, in my opinion, what's going to happen is, what's going to happen is when the doors open up and the floodgates start rolling, then the people that wait around for the last minute are gonna get stuck in line while they're trying to take the property. That's what's gonna happen. That's what I see happening. So let me see here. Yeah, so I don't, I don't, you know, Chris, I don't, I don't, I don't work with any of the stuff that you're talking about. The assignment, the TD of the servicer, I'm not sure what the, the TD is, but we don't work with any of that stuff. Okay, like I just said, the only thing that we use is two documents. And well, in non-judicial, one document, or two documents in non-judicial, and in judicial, we use one document. And we don't use any of that other stuff. So you gotta watch my videos and see how we see how we do stuff so that you understand. So that's all I got um, for now. And I hope to be back on here in a few days. I'm not exactly sure when. I'll be on the radio Wednesday uh, at one o'clock central time. So you guys can, can find me on there and 
we're going to be, uh, hopefully the, the dude go call in. If he wants to investigate me, he'll, he should call in and talk to me because I'm willing to talk to him on the air. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching and good night.